Hi, I'm Jess. Thought for the week. For those of you who uh, are watching uh, this video for the first time or uh, the channel for the first time, I'm a landlord. Uh, the business I run is forthelandlords.com. We're a letting agency. We're also the UK's number one property sourcer. That's by the by. I uh, do a video once. I try and do one on a Sunday, but I'm actually recording this on a Friday. I'll post it out on a Sunday, but I've got a very busy Sunday. Uh, and also, um, it just felt right. It was going to be about the same topic anyway. But I'm here. I'm about to uh, do um, a couple of property viewings. I don't normally do property viewings. We've got property sources out there, but they're local and I'm interested in these. Um, what I want to talk about is today why I think from now, late 2023 through to 2024, maybe 2024, all of it, I don't know, fingers crossed, hopefully, is going to be the maximum profit year that I've ever seen um, by set wise. Uh, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there, a lot of miserable people. I've got to tell you personally, and everybody in my office, all the property sources that we've got out there in the UK's buy to let hotspots, finding houses, um, are, they've all got a spring in their step. They're all very, very happy, very optimistic. And we can see that, well, the opportunity that's here right now, this second, it's the biggest it's been. Um, I've, I've been around a bit for a few years. I've been buying houses for 25 years. People often say, you know, don't try and time the market. It's the time on the market, not the time in the market. Don't try and time the market. But if you want to, it's now. <laughs> it's definitely now. Um, I was buying houses in 2000 and, uh, you know, 9, 10, 11, when things were really low and they were coming up feels really similar i've said this quite a few times um you know that oh, dim and gloom people out there were hurting and it was it was really kind of didn't feel good but it, it took a while for everybody to twig on that they were the years you should have been buying you know i remember driving around with estate agents and i was the only one doing viewings and the houses were the cheapest they'd ever been the best deals they'd ever been um and gradually, it you know, there was a couple of people tagging on behind it. It became a little snake of cars. And all of a sudden, you know, getting to 2010, 11, everybody had twigged on and, you know, every man and his dog was buying a buy to let. So why do I think that 2024, and it's December now, I'm going to start, it starts now, you know, get get started. Don't start, some of the best days to buy. Christmas we, uh, we 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 buy some houses on boxing day and in between Christmas and New Year so you know it starts now okay um so if, yeah yeah there's very people a few people in the market even taking the phone calls any very few sources taking the phone calls so when we take that phone call it's usually a good deal anyway so from now hopefully all the way through to 2024 maybe to a little bit of 2025 it's a small window why do I think these will be the most profitable buy to let buying season uh, buying year uh, you make money two ways when you buy a buy to let. Um, the first way is you, know, you own it for a long time, it goes up in value and you make some rent out of it. Now, interestingly, there's a lot of pessimism. I, I keep getting fit. So I have a number one question at the moment. Does buy to let still work? Does it stack? did a video a couple of weeks ago now about how it stacks. It stacks better now than it used to do. And um, people say, oh, minute, mortgages are really high. Um, how can it possibly stack? Well, mortgages actually aren't as high as you think they are. Um, if you ask the average person on the street, the landlord on the street, what, what is a mortgage now for a buy-to-let mortgage, they'll say, oh, isn't it still 9%, 8%, 7%? Go online, Google it, go to money supermarket or whatever, you'll find it. It's 5%, 4.89. If you're a limited company, it might be a smidging more. That's normal, guys. That's normal. If you're thinking buy-to-let mortgages should be 3.5%, of course they shouldn't. That was based on a 350-year low of a 0.25% Bank of England base rate. Buy-to-let should and must work at 5% payable. And if it doesn't, you buy the wrong kind of house. So you buy the right house in the right area for the right price, and it works. If you're looking at a house and it doesn't stack, you're probably buying the wrong house. The other thing you could be doing is getting a slightly high, too high loan to value. You know, if you're looking at 80 85%, maybe come down to 75 70 You know, that works. You're best you're leaving a little bit more equity in. But if you buy it right, you should be okay. We'll talk about the second way you make money in a minute. The other half of the first way to make money, the other half of the equation, it's not just mortgage rates, it's rents. You know, you've got your profit and loss. One is you know, rent in, mortgage out, and all the other costs. You can't do much about all the other costs. Lots of landlords over-egg that, you know. Put maintenance and voids and bad debts, they're not as that. Just run a tight ship. It's not as high as you think. Insurance, you know, Average insurance on one of my properties is 11 quid a month. You know, I've seen people stack deals. And it's like, hang on a minute, you're not going to spend 100 and 
20 quid and all that stuff, bring it down. It's You're going to spend 60 quid on it, whatever. That, that makes a difference. That makes a difference to how it stacks. But the two big numbers are your mortgage cost. It's not as expensive as you, as you think. And it needs to be 5% to make the world go around. And it should work at 5% if you buy the right house. And the second part of the equation is rent. Rents are... Well, I feel for, for renters sometimes, you know, they, they have gone up. We have to put the things to the market rent. Everybody's put their prices up. Um, you know, plumbers, electricians have put their prices up and that's relevant because we've got to maintain these houses. Inflation has meant that the number you think a rent level should be at is now a different number. You know, you think that should rent out for 750. It's it's almost certainly a thousand and it might be more like 1250, 1300 pounds. I've got houses that when I first bought them less than 10 years ago used to struggle to get 500 pounds a month and they're now getting 12, 1300 pounds a month. So when you stack a deal, you've got to put the right rent level and double, double, double check, really get an eye on the market because they've gone up a lot more than you think. I, 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 it's rare that I meet a landlord now that's got their right rent level in. If they haven't reviewed it in the last six months, say, and make sure you stack it at the right mortgage. So you wait, money in buy to let in two different ways. One is that equation, it's the profit and loss. And I can tell you now, even though mortgage rates are slightly higher, rents have gone up by more than the mortgage rates. I am making more cash profit today than I was three years ago on a single buy to let that I've just managed to refinance. There are some where I've still got a standard variable rate and I'm yet to refinance them and maybe I'm not. Some I'm still locked in and I'm locked in on a stupidly low rate and when it goes up, okay, I'll make a little bit less. But my rent will probably have gone up a little bit by, by then. On a deal that I've just bought six months ago, put on a fixed rate of, I don't know, 5.1, 5.2, 4.9, whatever it is, um, and I'm getting that much more rent, I'm making more money today than I was. So maximum profits. The biggest margin I've ever seen, percentage-wise as well, it's the biggest margin I've ever seen on the houses that we're buying now. The second way you make profit is when you buy. You buy a house for less than it's worth, maybe you can add a bit of value, you're making some, a serious chunk of change. You know, 10, 20, 30,000 pounds in six months, you're not flipping it. If you were to buy it, do it up and sell it, you'd make a profit, cash would be in your bank. You obviously then have to keep doing it again and flipping houses is, is hard work. But if you buy it, refurbish it, rent it, refinance it, you made exactly the same, you wouldn't call it a profit, you call it equity, but it's the same gain. You're not crystallizing it and putting it in your pocket. You're sticking it in your buy to let property bank account, which let's face it, that's the name of the game. That's what you want to do. That's building up security for the, um, for your later years, it's, it's it's putting money in the bank, you know. Uh, but if you if you buy that kind of house, and you can make a capital gain of twenty, thirty, forty thousand pounds, that's a really significant thing in your life. Let's just put it that way. You know, if I can manage to buy twelve houses a year, and each one on my balance sheet drops thirty thousand pounds onto my balance sheet, it's you know, look hell. I said a silly number. Maybe it's silly. Maybe you want to do more. Maybe you just want to do one. £30,000 is not to be sniffed at by anybody, you know? So, and that's a typical kind of number. We, we buy a house, refurbish it, and then rent it out. But when it's all, you know, the, the difference between what it's worth now and, and, and how much we paid for it and what we spent on it, it's yeah, typically about £30,000. That's significant. Now, I believe that there are more opportunities in the market now where you can make that amount of money by buying the right house in the right area for the right price and adding some value that then i've seen you know um going back nine months ago 12 months ago it was doom and gloom you know we weren't making much money because rents weren't as high as they were now and mortgages were really high and we couldn't find the kind of houses it was doom and gloom it's like, oh God, this is hard work but now we can find the houses um they're not everywhere you have to unearth them interesting thing here and this is why it feels a little bit like 2009 and 10 I call it soft, it's soft. So typical numbers of a house in 2008, and they're different now, but I'll, 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 I'll let you know um, what they were there just so I can remember and recall them properly. A typical house that it was, its end value was between 85 and 90,000 pounds when it was when it was bought, re um, renovated and refinanced. And I was buying them for sort of 55 to 65 in that bracket and spending anywhere from 10 to 15, maybe 20,000 pounds doing them obviously the, the cheaper ones but if I spent 20 grand on it I might might get it you know sort of 55-ish anyway you can see now yeah everything's slightly more the renovation will be slightly more my rent will be slightly more but the point was if I was buying a house for 60,000 pounds and they were going to be worth 85,000 pounds the most important thing to me was there were still people out there paying 
£85,000 for houses like that. The owner-occupier market was there for those properties, and it is now. Going back 12 months ago, there was very little market, very little movement. But now, you're seeing houses flying through, and our typical house would be sort of £125,000-ish, only 100 to 150, not much more than £200,000. And they're soft. You know, you'll, you'll, soft is the word I'm using. So you go through 10 houses, and I'm talking about prodding down. It's like, no, they won't. Let's say it's a 100 grand house, 125 grand house. No, they'll take 125. They'll take 125. They'll take 100. Oh, this one. Oh, this one will take. This one will take 85,000 pounds. It needs a 20,000 pound renovation. Do the maths. There's an equity gain. You'll find those bargains. You've really got to get hunting, but you will find them. So, I think we're super optimistic in our office. We are the UK's number one property source. So we are in business to find properties for ourselves. I'm a landlord, I still buy houses and we buy houses for, for other landlords, for our clients as well. We're in business to do this and without this working, we're not in business. We're a letting agency as well and I think that will always be needed. Of course it will, people holding stuff, but we love to grow our portfolio and uh, we're very optimistic. This next, I don't know how long it lasts, 12, like this, 12 months maybe? doesn't last long until everybody swi uh, switches on. At the moment, there isn't loads and loads and loads of people out there looking for these deals. Some people have still got it, high interest rates in the back of the mind. Maybe some people are genuinely hurting because of you know, inflation, their own business or their business they work for or own or something else in their life is hurting. And you know, there's financial pressure out there for sure amongst, you know, not, not in, in, in the property market particularly, but in, in every walk of life and that's stopping things moving. So for all those reasons, um, I don't want to prey on people's um, bad luck. But if, if, if the general economy is a little bit down, generally speaking, our property sourcing gets a little bit stronger. So yeah, we're feeling very optimistic at the moment. And uh, that's the message. Switch your mindset. If you've got a little bit um, doom and gloom, you can't quite see how it's working, take a look again. Mortgages are, are normal now. They won't move. They won't move for a couple of years. Rents are really high some bargains in the market oh, i've said that a few times recently it all boils down to the same conclusion come at it from a different angle but yeah, anyway so that's my thought i'm going to go and have a weekend now um anything that i'd like you to oh, nothing just take that thought but you know there'll be a link somewhere if you want to talk that through with any of the team got a team property sources you can place an order if you want to buy one of these houses the team are out there finding these houses now they're not finding loads and loads and loads um so getting quick but they're there there'll be a link click a link and it'll take you to some more information or you could probably book a book a one-to-one -to, -one to discuss it well which is usually the next step um sort out a mortgage broker or whatever 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 people if you if you haven't watched these videos before click on the link and you'll be taken through and then get some more information if you have you know what to do click on the link and you can basically use us to place an order to source a house bye for now have a nice weekend